In the world of PC building, small form factor or ITX builds are a niche within a niche. They demand meticulous planning, come with more hardware restrictions, and the price to performance ratio can often be skewed. Because of all of that, I don't often dive into the world of small form factor PC enclosures. But every now and then, something catches my eye and piques my curiosity. That's exactly what happened with the Johnsbo T6, a compact, sturdy, and surprisingly portable case. Debuting at Computex back in June, the T6 is now available, and I just had to get my hands on it. So let's dive in and check it out. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ here with Elevated Systems, and today we're diving into the Johnsbo T6 Mini ITX case. Now, I usually stick to a pretty standardized formula for my PC case reviews, but for this review, I'm tossing all that out the window because as soon as I got the T6 in the studio and out of the box, I immediately started pulling it apart and slapping components into it. So today I'm gonna mix things up by grouping build quality specs and features and the build experience all together. Then I'll briefly check out thermal and noise level performance before wrapping up with the pros and cons and my overall thoughts on the Johnsbo T6. The one thing I've always liked about Johnsbo and what usually draws me to their enclosures is the quality you get for the price and the T6 didn't disappoint. Opening up the box, the first thing you find is an accessory box with all the hardware neatly presented and labeled with clear instructions showing what each screw is for. Pulling the case out of the box, I immediately noticed its heft it weighs in at over seven and a half pounds, despite its small size of 223 millimeters long, 185 millimeters wide, and 332 millimeters tall. That's because the T6 is constructed from three millimeter thick media blasted aluminum alloy external panels, three millimeter tempered glass with an internal frame of one millimeter steel and a solid eight millimeter walnut wood accent panel, which houses the LED ringed power button, a five gigabit type A port, 10 gigabit type C port, and a headset jack. The tempered glass right side panel is toolless and secured with magnets. It can be removed by pulling on the tab at the top corner, though I found the plastic tab a bit unsightly. Luckily, I could tuck it away while still being able to easily remove the panel. The rest of the external panels are secured with M3 by six hex screws. Unfortunately, the included hex driver wasn't the correct size, but I did have a metric hex wrench set on hand with the appropriate two millimeter Allen key, so I was able to get inside the case. With the left, right, top, and bottom panels removed, I was ready to assemble a PC in this case. As with most small form factor builds, I had to reconfigure my typical component selection to fit the various size restrictions of the case, which I'll cover as we get to each component. Starting with the motherboard, the T6 is purpose-built for an ITX board or the very short-lived and apparently abandoned DTX form factor. You may also notice the motherboard is installed upside down, which allows the graphics card to be installed and pull fresh air from the top of the case and also explains the inverted or orientation of the case. There are two mounting locations for two two and a half inch SSDs below the motherboard. However, the ability to install SSDs there will depend on the CPU cooler you select. You can also mount a 120 or 140 millimeter fan in the front of the case and a 120 millimeter fan in the rear. Because of the tight space and the fact that most of the wires and cables run along the front of the case, I went with two 15 millimeter thick Arctic P12 Slim fans. Even though it's a mini ITX case, it's compatible with and full-size ATX power supplies up to 140 millimeters long. However, you'll notice that an ATX power supply completely covers the rear cable pass-through, so all your cables will need to use the front one. This is why the 140 millimeter length restriction exists any longer and you'll cover that front pass through also. The extra space in front of the PSU is also the only place to store excess cables. As far as build notes go, you'll want to install the motherboard without RAM or cooler attached before routing your cables as the dim slots are right above the one cable pass through. Also, keep in mind that because the motherboard is flipped, the front panel connectors will need to route up and across the motherboard. 
One nice thing about the configuration of the case is that it allows for CPU tower coolers up to 160 millimeters tall, while my Assassin 4S was just about three millimeters too tall, you still have plenty of options to cool even the most demanding CPUs. I went with the 145 millimeter Noctua NH-D12L because it matched the aesthetics of the case and could handle my 105 watt Ryzen 7600X with the second optional fan installed, which brings the height to just under the 160 millimeter mark. Unfortunately, while your selection of the CPUs is pretty much unlimited, your graphics card solution is restricted to no longer than 215 millimeters. This means you're going to see a lot of RTX 4060 builds in this case, because if you go to PC part picker and select all the current gen Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA cards and filter for cards 250 millimeters and under, the RTX 4060 and 46 DTI dominate the results. In fact, the only two cards I have on hand that do fit are the last generation RTX 3050 and the card I went with, the Sapphire RX 6600. John's boat does include a slot in the front of the frame, which makes installing the card very simple. Despite using a full ATX non-modular PSU, all the excess cables and slack fit neatly into the bottom of the case. I took some extra time tidying up and securing the cables inside because once I installed the second cooler fan, there was very little room between it and the front fan. I didn't want anything to get caught up in the blades and I wanted to ensure good airflow for this compact case. With all the components installed, it was time to reassemble the case, but not before adding the aluminum reinforced walnut handle, which provides an extremely solid way to transport the case. Now, the handle is optional, and it can also be mounted to the front of the case, perhaps as a headset hanger, or even on the side panel. However, only the top panel has extra reinforcement, making it capable of supporting the weight of an entire system. So if you decide to mount the handle to the front or sides, don't use it to pick up the case as you risk shearing the panel screws and dropping your PC. With the case all reassembled, it was time to test it out. Even though the Noctua NH-D12L is already a beast of a cooler, I went ahead and undervolted the CPU as I normally do for small form factor case reviews. This essentially turns the 105 watt Ryzen 7600X into a 65 watt 7600 non-X. This little tweak shaves off over 40 watts from peak package power, significantly lowering temps with no noticeable performance loss. Comparing the system temperatures inside the case to those on an open air test bench, the results were actually pretty impressive for a 13 liter case. Based on an average of three A to 64 stress tests, the CPU temperature inside the case increased by just 1.6 degrees Celsius. And despite being upside down at the top of the case, pulling air down, the GPU temperature only rose by two degrees during an average of three 20 minute Port Royal loops. As for noise, the case itself has no moving parts, it doesn't come equipped with any fans, so the noise profile is solely dependent on the components you choose. In my setup, I went with a quiet knock to a cooler and fairly quiet Arctic fans at full load with the fan curve hitting about 90 to 95% the noise level was only around 44.3 decibels. The most notable thing was that the case itself with its thick panels and beveled holes and slots didn't add any weird whistles or wind noise to the sound profile. Okay, small case, short review. So let's dive into what I feel are the strong and weak points of the John's Bow T6. First up, the build quality and materials used are definitely a major pro. This case is a mini mobile tank. I've worked with cases that have solid aluminum panels before. Inwin comes to mind as well as some old school Lian Lee cases, fractal design, but nothing quite like the three millimeter panels on the T6. Even the rear and bottom panels are solid aluminum and all of them are secured to a solid steel frame. The case is definitely over-engineered, but in a good way. I also really like the overall style, the industrial machine, media blasted aluminum, balanced with warm wood accents. Of course, that's subjective. Some have already described it as a cheese grater in my community post, but it also comes in anodized black, which tones down the bright silver cheese grater look. 
The support for full ATX power supplies is another plus as it opens up more options for builders and can cut some extra component costs. However, most SFX power supplies come with an ATX adapter plate, so they are still an option. The depth of the case allows for tall CPU coolers, making it possible to use even the highest end CPUs right out of the box. While it's always a good idea to optimize your CPU in the BIOS or curve optimizer, there isn't necessarily a need to do so for a low profile cooler, which is typically the case for a small form factor build. Despite its 13 liter volume, the case was surprisingly easy to work in, having room at the bottom for all the excess cabling was nice, and allowed me to keep the interior of the case clear of a rat's nest of cables. As long as you properly plan and pre-game your build, you shouldn't have any problems building in this case. Now, these pros do come with some trade-offs. All that room for a big PSU and cooler along with the case's configuration significantly reduces the space available for a graphics card. Modern graphics cards aren't getting smaller. I mean, just a few generations ago, high-end cards were available in mini ITX formats. That's not really the case anymore. As we saw, the highest end card that fits in this case is an RTX 4060 Ti. As far as I can tell, AMD doesn't have any current gen cards that will fit this case. This is gonna be a sticking point for builders who prioritize GPU power, especially when you consider that a case like the slightly smaller Fractal Terra can hold up to a 322 millimeter card. While that's a big con, it's really my only major gripe with this case. There are a few other areas for improvements though, like the glass panel. I'm not a fan of glass panels on a portable case, but I realize portability is just an option. So at a minimum, there needs to be a way to physically secure that glass panel other than just magnets. A tab with a thumb screw, a transport strap, something to prevent it from falling off while moving the case. Don't rely on the customer to improvise. I was also a little disappointed to find that the power button is loose and just moves around in the socket. This is probably an easy fix, but I didn't discover it until the build was complete and now it would require pulling the PSU out, which isn't happening. Finally, here's a tip I discovered. The feet are removable and with four M3 by 10 screws, you can mount them to the left side panel and configure the case horizontally. So John's bow, if you're watching, Add those four screws to your fancy accessory box and you can market the T6 as a dual orientation case. Personally, I think the horizontal look is very well suited for a media center PC. So what's my final conclusion on the John's Bow T6? Well, that depends on a few things. First up is the price. At the time of filming, this case is only available on AliExpress where I picked it up for about $150 with free shipping. That's a very fair and competitive price based on quality alone. If it makes its way to the Western market at around the same price, it's a good deal. But if it goes up much higher, it'll start to drift away from its competition. It also depends on your use case. If you're looking to build a mid-range gaming PC, a well-equipped media center, or a high-end productivity or development workstation focused on CPU workloads, and you like the format and style, then the T6 is a solid option. However, if you're after a high-end gaming PC or a content creation workstation that relies heavily on GPU power, then this case might not be the best fit. So that's the John's Bow T6. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for more tech reviews and DIY. Let me know in the comments what you think of the John's Bow T6. Would you consider it for your next build? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.